If you have to survive against other bloodthirsty monsters who kill for fun, hunters who want to exterminate you, and stop yourself from eating everyone you know and love. Damn. When dinner becomes a life or death decision, what- Damn! What it is, guys? It's your boy Blasphemous HD, and today I am here to check out a video that I cannot wait to check out. Why? Because I know a lot of you guys might not know this about me. I'm a little bit of a nerdy type of person, and when I say a little bit, I mean a whole lot of it. Like, bro, anime, video games, uh, uh, what's something else that nerds do? See, you're not even a nerd if you can't name five things. Shit. I got two, and that should be close enough. It's not. It's not. Two out of five? It's not even half, bro. Nigga, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you, nigga. Fuck you. Shut up. Today we are here to check out a video called How to Beat Every Monster in Tokyo Ghoul. Now, I love Tokyo Ghoul. It's one of my favorite animes. The fight scenes are wet as fuck. If you have not seen Tokyo Ghoul, Please go watch that shit. That shit is fire as shit. So if you guys want to watch the original video, the link in the description down below is by Cinema Summary. Let's do this. You've just been turned into a ghoul, a cannibalistic monster that must eat human flesh to live. You have to survive against other bloodthirsty monsters who kill for fun, hunters who want to exterminate you, and stop yourself from eating everyone you know and love. Damn. When dinner becomes a life or death decision, what- Damn! I never thought of it like that. Dinner is a life or death decision. Luckily enough, we live in modern times where dinner is not life or death. It's Burger King or McDonald's. Japanese steakhouse or 7-Eleven taquitos. Pretty much diarrhea or the itis. That's where I would say that that usually, usually gets me at. What do you do? I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat Tokyo Ghoul. Kaneki here is hanging out with his best friend who's watching a news report about the human eating ghouls in the area. Nobody knows what these ghouls look like and anybody here could be one in disguise. First off, that's where he's messing up at is watching the news. Nothing but bullshit usually. It's pretty scary and his friend teases that even he might be a ghoul, but Kaneki doesn't care and just wants to eat his food. Mm -hmm. Daring him to get a life, his friend takes his book and throws it on the ground, but that's when this woman finds it and picks it up for him. She starts to flirt with him, showing that she's reading the same book. Kaneki can't believe his luck and decides to ask her out on a date. Ooh, okay, we dinner. have no way of knowing who's a flesh eating ghoul. Either that or worse, she eats ass. Or even worse, wants her ass eaten. How is that worse? That shit should be in the judicial system of justice as a punishment for men. If I see your ass in here again, you're gonna be eating ass. And who isn't until they're taking a huge bite out of your face? If every new person you meet could be a threat, then living a normal life in this city will be impossible unless we have a way to test if they're a ghoul or not. The simplest thing to do is prick your finger and expose the scent of your blood before meeting someone for the first time. Ghouls eat humans, so if they smell your blood, it will likely affect their behavior oh. and you might be able to pick up the clues. Damn. The better solution though is to deal with this digitally. If there were friends you knew weren't ghouls, you vouch for them on social media, and enough people know that person to not be a ghoul, their rating is very high. Or they just hire people to vouch that they're not a ghoul. That's what I would do. That way when you meet a new person, you would have more confidence in knowing if they're more likely to be a ghoul or less likely based on how many people have vouched for them. Now, we shouldn't be hunting and killing people based on this app, but deciding not to hang out with that person socially would be a good call. He goes out with Rize here and she's very sweet, but there are subtle hints that she's a little bit different. He notices that she hasn't taken a bite out of her food and asks her why she isn't eating. <laughs> she said she's been overdoing it lately and Kaneki here shrugs it off, but outside, this girl's watching them suspiciously. She definitely knows something that this guy doesn't. Okay, when we know there are ghouls around that only eat humans, this girl's sudden loss of appetite is a serious red flag. Now, Japan is one of the highest rates of eating disorders in the world, so bulimia and anorexia are on the rise. But this was a pre-planned date, which means she had plenty of time in advance to manage her appetite. If we just bought this girl a sandwich that she won't touch, I'm thinking that either she has an eating disorder or she's a ghoul. Or she's ungrateful. Yep, gotta hit her. It's the only way. Why do you always go towards hitting? I don't know what you're talking about. You always gotta be hitting somebody. I don't know Why? what you're talking about. I ain't never hit nobody. Are you okay? Uh, I, I... <laughs> you're not okay. What? Because <laughs> you got your ass beat, huh? It's not apparent, isn't it? It's not apparent. <laughs> oh God, I'm living a lie. <laughs> Either way, I'm not taking that risk and would end the relationship. 
but I'm also terrible at breakups, so I probably tell her I'll call and avoid this coffee shop for the rest of my life. Later that night, they walk back from their date, and the Ooh. girl stops them to go in for a romantic hug. He's pretty excited. Oh shit, damn. She I didn't goes, until she she's trying to fuck on the banister, my nigga. She so, a keeper, maybe. She said a romantic hug. That is romantic as fuck. Coming on a banister at night. Got lights in the background. Isn't that a good day? T women are ungrateful. What? He's about to come in his pants because of a hug. Which is a compliment to her. See, this is the problem with females. Always talking about, oh, give me compliments. But the minute a nigga prematurely ejaculate, now it's, 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 you know. You're always protecting You people. <laughs> I'm gonna edit that out. He takes a massive bite out of his shoulder. Damn! And Kaneki here thinks that the relationship is moving a little too fast. You think? He breaks out of her grip and falls to the ground, Bro, horrified bitch. to see that this woman's eyes are glowing oh, red. That's She's not a good. ghoul, and he's going to be her dinner yep. for the night. Yeah, you just got your ass eaten. Okay, this could have been avoided. First of all, in a city with ghouls roaming around eating humans, taking your date to an empty part of town in the middle of the night with no one around is just plain stupid. We're completely overpowered here, and there's definitely no chance of escape. Damn, the homie's about to lose his virginity. <laughs> But there's one observation that could save our lives. This girl put a lot of time and effort into luring us out here, which means hunting humans is not as easy or convenient as you might think. And if it wasn't for this guy's poor judgment, it wasn't even guaranteed to work. I would offer to help lure more humans to feast on in exchange for my life. If this girl's already playing a long game, then she might see the upside to this bargain and sacrifice one meal now for 10 meals in the future. I'd also get to pick all the people I hated most and she would get rid of them for me. It's a win-win situation. He tries to run away, but she stabs him with her tentacle, brings him back into her reach, and starts to lick the blood from his face. Oh. He begins to cry, realizing his life is over, but as he looks up, he notices these metal beams swing overhead, and they suddenly crush the monster. He just got really lucky here, but he has no idea that this girl would change his life forever. He wakes up in a hospital room and has perfectly recovered from the terrifying incident. Dang. But the doctor tells him the only reason he survived was because he transplanted the dead ghoul's organs into his- Wow! Dirtbag ass niggas! Cannot believe they've done this. How you gonna transfer the dead killer into me? I didn't ask for this! His body. Later, he sees the doctor on TV discussing his treatment, but doesn't mention the organ donor was a ghoul and is keeping it a secret from the public. Okay. I would be really grateful to this doctor here for saving my life, but also this is some sketchy business. Not mentioning he took the organs from a ghoul is just unprofessional. I would honestly threaten to report this doctor to the medical board of the hospital unless he continues to see me on call if any weird shit happens to me as a side effect. With tentacles like this, ghouls are a completely different species. Their organs are built to digest only human flesh, so they're going to require the same diet to stay healthy. It's not a given that we'll have to eat human flesh as well, but I expect there'll be some pretty f***ed up adjustments my body will have to make, and I want to keep this doctor around if it all goes to hell. Meanwhile, two agents are investigating the corpse of the school here and find a special ring on his finger. These men are a part of a government-funded task force designed to track down and kill every ghoul they can find. They discover that the ring was commissioned with a second ring, which means he has a ghoul wife. But there's only one clue that will help find her, and that's this fiber left on the dead man's shirt. Later that day, Kaneki is released from the hospital and joins his friend for lunch, but finds himself having a hard time eating. It's so revolting that he throws it up. He goes home and finds that he can't eat fruits or vegetables either. All normal food makes him want to puke, and he can't figure out why. But when he looks in the mirror, it finally hits him. One of his eyes is bloodshot red, and somehow the transplant has turned him into a ghoul. Okay, this is life or death. He can't eat normal food, and he's going to die of starvation in 20 to 40 days unless he figures out how to kill and eat humans without getting caught. But there is some good news. Whatever nutrition ghouls get from human flesh, it's still broken down into the same components of proteins and amino acids that feed your body. If I can't eat regular food, then I would try to first solve this problem with vitamins and a drip. This would make sure I was getting enough nutrients to stay alive without causing a gag reflex. Yeah, I don't know if they have human in vitamin form. I haven't seen it at Walmart or Walgreens. Basically any place with walls and huh? Or vitamin wood. Or GNC nutrients. Yeah. Place. I ain't seen that either. That's good. The vitamins are swallowed whole and dissolved, and if everything else is taken intravenously, then I can get enough nutrients to delay the need to start killing and eating all of these people. It's also important to maintain a normal life to avoid suspicion, so I would buy colored contact lenses so that I can move throughout the city without being discovered. 
That night, he takes a walk, but his hunger starts taking over as he's tempted to eat the people walking by. But that's when he smells something delicious and follows the scent. Walking down an alley, he finds another ghoul feeding on his latest victim. The monster offers him an arm to eat, when someone kicks the guy's head and clean off his neck. This other ghoul threatens him, warning not to feed in his territory when this girl appears, the same one who was watching Kaneki's date earlier. She tells him this territory is protected by the Antiku and kicks the daylights out of him before he gets up and jumps the wall to run away. She offers the disembodied arm to Kaneki here, but scared out of his mind, he refuses and runs back home. Okay, this is a pretty horrifying situation, but he's freaking out at the wrong thing here. These ghouls are passing around a human arm out in the open and they're being way too casual about all of this. If I were them, I would always take my food to go so I'm at the murder scene for as short as possible because the longer I'm there, the more evidence I'm likely to leave behind and we run the risk of getting caught. I would also bring coolers and ice packs to make sure the food stays fresh then take it back home. Secondly, it's a really bloody job to pick out your favorite organs, so I would carry another set of clothes. It's a common technique used by criminals in order to make it harder for the police to track them down. Sure? Why does he know that? I never knew that. How did you not know that? I didn't pre-plan a lot of my foolishness. I just did it and then ran. <laughs> <laughs> just... That's why you went to jail, huh? A little bit. <laughs> I only went to jail three or four times though. So it wasn't yeah, like... you gotta plan ahead. You always gotta have an escape route. Now, learning all this on your own is going to be difficult, but since all ghouls are forced into hiding, it's more likely that they would support each other in some kind of underground network. This girl is connected to a group of ghouls called the Antiku, and they will probably have answers we need. So if I were in this situation, I would be asking for an introduction, because we're not going to survive very long without some guidance. Another day has passed, and Kaneki here still hasn't eaten a thing. He yeah. visits the Antiku Cafe where the girl works and asks if she has any food he can eat. She scolds him for being a bum, but then her boss appears and offers that. Damn, bitch! <laughs> really, bitch? Don't fucking hit me! I haven't eaten in six days! Yo, get out of here, you fucking bum! Like, it's... Jeez, bitch! Telling her that helping other ghouls is the Antiku way. Inside, he's given a cup of coffee and finds out that it helps suppress the hunger pains. The hey! manager kindly gives him some meat, and Kaneki here <coughs> hesitates at first, but takes it home. Tempted by his hunger, he unwraps the package to find a human organ inside. He wants to eat it, but finds the strength to throw it away. Okay, this guy is clearly in denial. Human meat that you don't have to kill is going to be very hard to find, and he's literally throwing the only thing he can eat into the trash. I definitely would- That ain't gonna be- <laughs> give him about six hours. He gonna be out there ripping at the trash. Even if it's only to buy me more time to learn how to find my own food, coffee is going to help, but ultimately it's not going to do the job. Now killing and eating people would be an emotionally scarring and traumatic situation, but there just might be a better way- Only the first time! ...to do this without- Don't ask. ...breaking my mind. I would first look for institutions that might have a lot of fresh corpses on hand, such as more- Is it bad that I thought that was an anus? <laughs> like, what the- How did we get video of this? We don't know! <laughs> what the fuck? Orgs, tissue banks which harvest and store donated organs, and medical schools. That doctor that I blackmailed for turning me to a beat his ass. <laughs> to get... <laughs> monster, I, I would now first. start blackmailing for fresh human corpses. If I have an insider working for me from the hospital, I could eat the organs of the newly deceased without having to kill anyone. Mm. The next day, Kaneki's friend introduces him to the senior, Nishiki, but he realizes it's the same guy he met in the alley. There's been a ghoul studying here on campus, and he's never even realized. But when the senior recognizes him, he slams the friend into the coffee table. He thinks the kid brought his friend to be eaten, but when he finds out he didn't, Nishiki here decides to take the human for himself. Kaneki picks up a golf club and attacks the ghoul. Yep, there you go. But it's useless. The Ooh. guy's a lot tougher than he looks, and is ready to feast on the kid when his tail is suddenly sliced off, and Kaneki here suddenly grows three tentacles out of his back. He's fully transformed and impales the senior with a- Wow! Homie gonna try to run, but it's really like that. Bro, I've had people do some of those hilarious shit in the world to me when they try to fight me and then I fight back. Okay? Like, like, how dare you? God. Ah. One of the worst ones is when they try to shame me for defending myself. That's like somebody punching you in the face and then when you punch them back, what's wrong with you? Shit! Oh, get my lip, you son of a bitch! I man, you hit me first. I literally had that happen. The fuck? They picked the right one, nigga. <laughs> oh shit. Tentacle before he can escape. When he checks on his friend, he sees the blood and starts feeling hungry, unable to resist licking his face clean. He's about to give in, but the girl from yesterday appears with another ghoul and stops him. 
Okay, these giant tentacles are a game changer. This guy's never used them before and managed to take out this experienced ghoul really quickly. But sadly, he's also just used them this- Immediately tries to dog, uh, 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 mount his, steal his friend money, food, are you having a stroke? You're this just guy has words. no experience living as a ghoul, <laughs> and using your tentacles like this out in public will bring the attention of ghoul hunters, which is bad for every ghoul in town. His inexperience is putting everyone at risk Start of getting caught, your and face. needs to be taken care Delicious. of immediately. I would either kill him or have another ghoul to keep watch over him at all times to make sure he stays out of trouble and quietly adapts to his new life without drawing any more attention. He's taken to the Antiku Cafe and finds out that his friend has been hopping. He looked like he just got broken up with. <laughs> Hospitalized. That's when they reveal that Kaneki here is the only person in the world that is both human and ghoul, and they invite him to work at Antiku to help him better adapt to his new condition. That night, Kaneki here goes with a ghoul named Yomo to the forest. They're here to scavenge for suicide victims and harvest their meat. Yo Whoa. <laughs> Who tells them a lot of weaker ghouls can't hunt for themselves, and Antiku helps to get their food. Okay, scavenging for suicides is actually a good strategy. Japan has one of the highest suicide rates in the world, with really? over 20,000 yeah. on average each year. Shit! The fuck? God, Jesus! Oh! They even have a forest at the foothills of Mount Fuji called Awikigahara. Shit, Logan Paul can tell you that. <laughs> he filmed a dead body in there and got in a lot of trouble. He found a hanging suicide victim and no. filmed it. He had five million subscribers at the time, probably 10. And he was getting like eight to 10 million views per vlog. And all of those people, about 21 million people saw that and shit. He posted, it? he posted it. Why did he post it? Yeah. Entirely possible to run into a corpse on your way through. Now, this isn't going to feed all the ghouls in the city, but if they could live exclusively off of corpses instead of feeding off the living population, then they wouldn't be hunted as much. If I were this guy, I would plant a ghoul to work in every morgue in the country. That way, we'd have an endless supply of human organs that didn't require any extra killing, and the entire ghoul population could be fed. This also centralizes power to the Antiku here and turns us into a highly profitable organized crime family. If the entire ghoul population is dependent on your business for survival, you'd be heavily protected from the law and get rich in the process. Meanwhile, the investigators discover that the fiber strand came from a specific dress at this shop, and the last customer to buy it also bought a dress for a little girl. This means the ghoul they're tracking has a daughter. Looking through security footage, they find a customer that's wearing the matching ring that they've been looking for. Her last known sighting was in this park, and they decide to investigate the area. Back at the cafe, Kaneki here meets this girl and learns that she and her mother are being hunted by the investigators. The staff are letting them stay here until they can be moved to a safer location. But later that night, Hinami here asks to visit her dad's gravesite to drop off these coffee beads as a tribute. Kaneki knows that the agents won't recognize him, so he offers to go for her. He heads to the park, places the coffee beads at the grave, and after paying respects, he leaves. But doesn't know the agents are already there, and now they have a clue as to where their target is hiding. Jesus. Okay, this is a terrible idea. We know these coffee beans are especially Tiku blend, and leaving them at the gravesite would be evidence that the investigators could trace back to the cafe. The smartest thing to do is tell her no. I'm not putting myself at risk for fucking coffee beans. He's also a pretty easy person to track down based on his physical description, and the eye patch is not helping him blend in. Japan has over 5 million CCTV cameras throughout the country, so his movements wouldn't be hard to track. Also, since he arrived at the park by foot, the investigators can safely assume he lives nearby. So there are too many ways this can go wrong, and we should tell this girl to keep her beans to herself. Nah. But if we were being nice, then at least wait for the girls to leave town and let the investigation settle before honoring her promise. She's just a child, and a white lie can fix a lot of problems in a situation that she clearly doesn't understand. The next day, the two ghouls leave the Antiku Cafe to go into hiding when it suddenly begins to rain. They take shelter but are cornered by the investigators. The mother tells her daughter Damn. to run away and stays behind to face off against the agent. Birdman, bitch! Skull! That's when she releases her period wings. The girl finds yeah. Kaneki here and asks for help, but by the time they get back, all they can do is watch as one agent takes a ghoul-like weapon and executes the mother in front of them. It's heartbreaking, and they'll be coming for the daughter next. They go back to the cafe, hey. and Toka here wants to go kill the two agents. She's warned that if she does, more investigators will be sent here and put the ghouls in more trouble. But even with these risks, she still chooses to leave. 
Okay, this girl's being too emotional, but she's also the only one thinking clearly here because these ghoul hunters are still looking for the daughter. Now that Kaneki has connected these coffee beans to the investigation, it will lead them to the Antiku Cafe where they'll find a whole sanctuary of ghouls. We should try to convince everyone that this is an existential threat and help us ambush the detectives. I would plant an Eden corpse for them to find and when they arrive, have five different ghouls attack them. This guy's a pretty serious weapon here, but with a strong team effort, we should be able to take them down as long as we keep the element of surprise. That night, the agent is walking back home with his friend, when he's suddenly pushed out of the way by his co-worker, oh, who gets shit. killed by a ghoul in a bunny mask. Oh, he runs shit. to grab his weapon from the suitcase, but she beats him to the floor. Ooh. She's about to kill him when his partner comes to his rescue and wounds her, sending her running. Okay, this didn't exactly go very well. The sneak attack was a great strategy, but she did not use her time very wisely. For a normal human being, it can actually take over a minute to strangle someone to death because the blood that supplies oxygen to the brain must be stopped until the brain itself dies. Damn. It doesn't seem like very much time, but when you're committing murder, you want to leave the crime scene as soon as humanly possible before someone else shows up. The tactical thing to do is accelerate toward top speed and slit his throat. There's so much force in the inertia that a knife could rip straight through his neck and it would only take seconds to kill him. Then I would take their weapon in the suitcase and leave before his partner arrives. Later, Kaneki here finds the girl injured after her fight and she chews him out for not trying to avenge the woman's murder. He approaches the boss and begs him for help, but the man refuses. He thinks there's no way the ghouls at the cafe could fight off the agents, so Kaneki here decides to handle it himself. He visits the girl and asks her to teach him how to fight, and he's absolute garbage. But in a short time, he trains to become extremely skilled and now he's able to use his tentacles as a weapon. Later, Kaneki and his co-worker find the girl has gone missing. I gotta see this movie. I'm about to get this shit. Shit look good. She's triggered by a strong scent and follows it back to the place her mom died. Uh -oh. Finding the source of the smell, she realizes it's her mother's butchered arm. Kaneki uh, and Toka try to reach her in time. Why do I think it was coffee beans? <laughs> it's too late. She's fallen for the investigator's trap. He lets her run off and reports back to his partner who drives to meet him, but passes by Kaneki here as he recognizes the car and follows it. The investigator corners the little girl at a levee and is about to kill her when suddenly Toka here shows up to defend her. Meanwhile, Kaneki attacks the other agent, Ooh. sending his car flying before he jumps to safety and the vehicle crashes Ooh. straight into a building. Walking in with his new mask, Ooh. the two begin to fight, but this agent has more experience than Kaneki and beats him down. Damn. Okay, Kaneki here didn't think this through. Flipping this guy's car was pretty badass, but all he's done is drag this thing out into an unnecessary fight. There was a much quicker way to deal with this guy, and I would have used my tentacles to kill him while he's driving. Even though it's a crime committed in public, we're already engaged in combat with the ghoul hunters, so there's no point in hiding until they're killed. Luckily, if we're spotted, at least he's already wearing a mask, so we could easily kill him in the car and slip away to join the other fight without being identified by anyone. Meanwhile, Toka fights the agent and flings his crystals at him, but it's no match for his weapon. It knocks her back, and when she gets up, it springs out of the ground. Run, this thing is seriously overpowered. She runs down to attack him when suddenly the agent pulls out a huge tentacle, and the daughter realizes Ooh. he harvested it from her mother. Ooh. The agent manages to squeeze her with his weapon, smashing the ghoul against the ground and rips her shoulder open. He's about to finish her when suddenly his arm gets cut off. The little girl has unleashed her tentacles at the last moment, allowing Toka here to kill him. Okay, there was a better way to deal with this. The man is obviously a pro. How the hell are you gonna say this shit, man? You fought ghouls before? You got a lot of information on fighting ghouls and shit. I ain't seen you getting a no altercations with nobody with tentacles or red eyes or huge things coming out the back of them. Yeah, it but his only strength are these ghoul weapons, and I would be looking for every opportunity to take them away. The tentacle can stretch really far, and if we lured it out beyond his line of sight, then this will give us an opportunity to attack him. I would trick him into launching it at me through this hole in the bridge here. Once it's through, I would run over the side and jump down right on top of him to knock the weapon out of his hand. It's a risk, but there's a Nigga, you gonna die. possibility that I could land on him faster than it would take for the tentacle to retract all the way back through the hole and curve in the opposite direction to strike me. Once I've knocked it out of his hands, he wouldn't be able to control it and his ranged weapon is removed. That leaves only these winged tentacles here, which is great for blocking, but only if he knows where we are. I would get back up on the higher platform and circle around to the banks of the river to shoot the crystals at his back. If it doesn't work, it still forces him out of his position, and this gives the girl enough time to run away from him. Meanwhile, Kaneki is losing the battle, but he manages to break free Ooh. and jumps on the agent's back to bite his shoulder. Now with a taste of blood, his tentacles are unleashed and he tosses him up onto a balcony. But the agent isn't done yet. He presses a button and his weapon starts spinning. 
Kaneki here can't pull the weapon away, and none of his attacks can get through. The investigator knocks him off the balcony, but as he falls, he pushes the man off balance and disarms him in midair. The investigator lands on the car and gets pinned down. Kaneki is overwhelmed by his ghoulish instincts for human flesh, but stops himself at the last minute what? and leaves the man alive. Later, Ew, he reunites with Toka and the little girl it? and helps him back to the cafe. The next day, Kaneki here says goodbye to the little girl and prepares himself to continue his new life as a ghoul. That movie looked fire. Yeah, I'm glad they put a bunch of special effects into it because Koki Doki, <laughs> that movie is uh, one of my favorite animes. I'm glad it doesn't suck. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to comment, like, and or subscribe. Here's your boy Blasphemous HD.